Cards by Kate Fletcher. In a recent Project Share Sunday, I showed you this gift bag here. Now this gift bag was made for my husband using some dies that I won in a craft stash competition a few months ago. And a lot of you absolutely loved this bag and were really complimentary about it. So what I thought I would do today um, is I thought I would show you the die set and then make one of these bags up and show you how I do it. And then I thought I'd do a giveaway as well. So I'm going to put this to one side. So this is the die set I've been using. It's the Simply Made Crafts Doctor's Bag die set. Now I think this came out four or five months ago. There's a few videos out there saying how to put this together and showing it off. Um, so this is just my way I suppose. I've probably looked at the other videos so I'm probably going to incorporate bits from everyone else's videos but um, yeah this is just kind of how I'm going to do it. So in the um, kit you get 13 dies in total and you do need an A4 die cutting machine to use these. Um, now the only thing I will say that I have found with Certainly the bigger one is that it bends when I run it through my machine and I'm using the right sandwich um, but it is quite flimsy. That's the only downfall but it's a really nice kit. I love the bag. You've all loved the bag so I'll just keep bending it back into shape and keep going I suppose. So the papers I am going to use today came from the Enchanted Swan by Do Crafts and Paper Mania. I got this pad literally just before lockdown and I think it's stunning. I absolutely love it but I haven't used it much um, so I thought right well I'll use it today to make a gift bag and then we'll see how we go. So those are the papers I'm going to be using and they are 160 GSM. So I'll show you um, the dies and what I've cut. So the first one I cut was this one here. Um, and this is the one I found to be quite flimsy and it tended to bend when I ran it through my die cutting machine. So I don't know why it's doing that, to be honest. So it's a really large die. It's about 11 and a quarter in length. And when I cut this, this bit is the bottom of the bag. And the thicker end is the top of the bag. So I've cut two of those out. Then there's this bit. Now this bit is the side piece. And so I made sure to cut it with the triangle at the top because these will form tabs and they end up tucking in. Um, so it's really easy to remember with this one which way to go because you want the triangle pointing up and I have cut two of those then I have this long um, strap type one as you can see this also bent a bit while I was cutting it um, I've actually cut three of these and I have cut them out of silver this time just for a change Then these are like the fastening straps. I've cut two of those. That's a great little die. That's really stable. It didn't bend. I'm really happy with that one. There's a buckle. Again, no issues cutting with that. And I've cut two of those. You get two zips in the kit. This is the second one the first one was like a rounder bottom um, and I used that on the other bag so I thought I'd change it up and have this zip this time so I've only cut one of those I've also cut one of these again no issues with this die 
and this will be a closer on the bag then I've cut one of these again this bent a little bit when I was um, cutting it and this is going to be the zip so I have one of those and then I've cut this one once and I've done it so that that bit can sit in there so I've only needed one of those as well so I have all my bits to one side um, I'm also going to be using hook and loop adhesive dots so I've got the dot and dab ones I think I got these from every crafts a pound I really like these I think they're really good quality and they hold really well so I'll be using three of these um, I'm going to be using red liner tape in places but I'm also going to be using my Anita's tacky glue and I'll talk more about those when I get to them so uh, let's just put these away now I've showed you because we don't actually need those anymore okay so I've missed one and that's this one this forms like it's not a tag but you know on some bags they have that um it's almost like a label without being the label but I've cut one of those as well so these are all my pieces I have gone for silver this time for two reasons I thought a it changed it up from gold but I also thought silver complemented the colors I've used as well so let's just move these to the side I'm really sorry if you can hear traffic in the background it is quite late but apparently people are still roaring around on their motorbikes and I have my windows open because it is still really really hot so um yeah I'll show you the detail on these in a minute let's try not to lose anything so this is going to be the side panel isn't that a beautiful paper and this is going to be my main body of the bag so the first thing I'm going to do is just fold and burnish this top score line but I'm not going to be doing much with these bottom score line because that's where I'm going to end up joining them together so so I'm just going to move these out the way while I fold these. Uh, I'm going to fold them in on themselves because I'm pretty sure a doctor's bag, that's how it would like to join. So I don't know what the temperature is outside all i know is i am mel literally melting um it's been so hot today i woke up and it was hot i mean it's just been an insane day and i don't want to moan because i don't like the cold but there is a bit of a limit to what i can actually deal with i think and i think i'm kind of there so I am using directional paper, so I was careful to make sure that I cut them the right way so that I wouldn't have like one paper upside down kind of thing. So I'm going to glue these together really quickly. Um, and for this, I'm actually going to use my red liner tape. Now, depending whose video you watch, different people will say use different glue so Helen Griffin who actually designed the set she recommends that you use hot glue um, but I'm not doing that for a couple of reasons um, one reason <laughs> really straightforward and simple my glue gum a is a little bit broken but also the place where I get my glue sticks from 
no longer does them anymore so I need to find a new place to find glue sticks and without spending like a fortune so I'm trying to eke them out until I can find somewhere to get the glue sticks so that's number one why I'm not using hot glue but the other reason is I really like um, to have the wiggle room that you get using wet glue and I know right now I'm using the red liner tape but um, later on I'll be using the wet glue and you can't really go wrong putting the red liner tape just on that score line there so yeah that's why I'm using red liner tape and wet glue um, in some videos as I say they use wet glue they use red liner tape it depends who you watch really I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to do it it's whatever you feel comfortable with anyway that's enough about glue these are the side panels so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and round them off a little bit just with my bone folder because I want them to kind of curve round a bit when it's shut so I'm just going to loosen the fibres up to try and give it a helping hand I'm not going to do it loads and then there's, I don't know if you can see, there's score lines where the triangle is and I'm going to fold them into, is it a valley? Yeah, valley. I don't know if this is showing up, but there are score lines in the triangle there. So I'm just going to go across them. And I'm going to also just fold down the score lines on the side as you can see there's a score line there I'm not doing the tabs yet um, I'm going to wait till I come to sticking it down to do those really I'm sure there's probably easier ways to, to do what I'm doing but you know, once I'd put it together one way, I just thought I'd stick to that way of doing things. Okay, I'm just going to try and loosen those fibres a little bit more. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this as well. But never mind. And there's a score line just along the bottom here, which I'm going to fold in on itself as well the great thing about these sets is it cuts and puts the score lines in so you can't really go wrong all right that's the first one I'm just going to do exactly the same with this one here so let me talk to you about the giveaway I'm going to do while I'm sorting this second one out so what I thought I would do is I thought I would do a giveaway of like one of these bags. So because they're quite large to post, what I actually thought I would do is find some nice papers and cut the bits out and then um, let whoever wins choose between gold silver or craft craft works really well with these bags actually um and then i'll cut the um kind of embellishments separately for you and then i thought i would post you out the bag for you to make up so you can do it how you like i haven't decided on what papers i'm going to use yet i'll be honest um might well be a Christmas bag because everyone's doing Christmas stuff at the moment but it might be 
normal paper. I honestly, I don't know yet. <laughs> I haven't looked through my stash to see what there is. Um, but yeah, I thought I would do that. I thought that was a nice little giveaway because everybody did like um, the bag so much. So I thought it would be a nice way for someone to have a go at having one of the bags if they haven't got the dies or they haven't got the die cutting machine or what have you. Yeah, I just thought that might be a nice little giveaway. So we will do that at the end and decide what has to be done for that. Okay, so I'm going to now stick these on. So... I don't know if you can see, there is a join here where the bag has been stuck together and we want to put this bit here over the join but you want it to sit equal obviously because this is going to kind of hold it together. So let's work out the easiest way to do this. So if I measure this flap, it's about four and three quarters. So I'm just going to grab a pencil and I'm going to make a mark. Let's try two and let's try two and three. Three eighths. So I'm going to put the ruler at two and three eighths next to the join line. Put a mark down there, and then I'm going to go the same the other way. So there's the join line. Two and three eighths. So now I should just be able, yeah, to stick my two ends up to those pencil marks I'm sure I said the right re measurement I will check if it's wrong I'll put a note on the video so I know there are probably people out there who could probably make this bag without dies but you know I'm just not that clever <laughs> but these dies make it so easy And I'm just making sure that it literally butts up against the edge here and it's nice and straight. I'm just going to use my bone folder just to give a little bit more pressure on there. Okay and now all I need to do is flip this round and draw the same pencil marks this side and then I also know that these are dead level once I've lined them up. Those are now in place so all we have to do is glue these to the gift bag so now what I can do is just kind of push the um, tabs around and they will be round because of the way they're cut probably could have done that before I glued everything down but never mind and then we just want to glue up the side of of this um, scored line here and then push it all into shape so that it's nicely butted up and you've got no crease lines um, so again I'm going to use my Anita's, Anita's glue so for the first bit on the tabs I'm just going to go up the paper on the bottom but for the rest of it I'm going to go up the score line 
hope this is making some sense. So I want to start with the tabs down the bottom and kind of push them into shape because this glue, I don't know about anyone else, I do find it goes off quite quick. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room but not a whole load. I'm just going to push the, um, I'm just using my thumb, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of down there. I'm using that, my thumb, to push the round tabs at the bottom to make sure that forms really well. I've kind of loosely butted everything else up, but I'm really working on the round tabs down there and holding those in place. Because everything else, I can always add more glue up the side kind of thing, if that makes sense. But I want to make sure there's no gapping here. So really quickly, I'll just come along here. And then what I can do is I can always come back later with my glue eraser and get rid of those bits. But for now, that's fine. So I'm going to do the same again on this corner here. And what I just found for me, putting the tab glue direct to the bottom paper worked well. And then gluing this crease line here itself worked well but you might find it easier to do it all on the bottom paper you might want to use hot glue it's entirely up to you I, honestly i don't think there's like a definite right or wrong way to do these boxes really Okay, so I'm just pinching the sides in to make sure it's got a really good seal on it. So that's the first side done and now we just need to repeat that over here. See now this side should be easier because we've already done one side of the box. So this side should be a lot easier to do. How amazing are these bags going to look under a Christmas tree? I think they're going to look phenomenal. And whoever gets the present is going to be... I mean, it just gives the present the wow factor, really, doesn't it? When you get a bag like this. And I know I didn't technically make it because I didn't like design the dies and stuff and I didn't do it all by hand, but I have sat and cut it and I have put it together so it is handmade by me. And I think, it, I think these are going to look brilliant. I think I'm going to end up using this die a lot for Christmas because it's a really generous size inside as well. So I hope this is all making sense as I go along. 
I hope it will be easy to follow for whoever wins the die cuts I send out. And I'm still trying to think what I'm going to do for the giveaway, if I'm honest. I just thought it would be a nice thing to do because so many people liked the bag. Um, and, you know, not everyone will have the dies, not everyone will have the A4 machine. So... I just thought it would be a nice little thing to do a giveaway, send out the dies for somebody to put together themselves. So there you can see the bag is starting to take shape. How beautiful is that looking? Isn't that stunning? So now we get to play with the embellishmenty bits. I'm just going to put the bag to one side and I'm, go I'm going to show you these because they're actually really detailed. So this is one of the three straps. Just be careful, obviously, it's mirror card and I don't want glue getting on it. But look, you can see the stitch detail on the side there. Isn't that beautiful? So I've got three of those. The zip, I don't know if you can see, it, it does kind of have a little raised area on there which is awesome for dimension then the zip look at this it's kind of embossed it and then can you see there's even a little zip area there how brilliant is that and then for the zip to go on, I didn't use this piece last time. I used a different piece. But I thought, actually, you can see the detail. Look at the ends of that. And I just thought if you stuck that on there, how amazing does that look? Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of detail on these. That's one of the straps. The fastening straps you can see the detail on there so really really clever die set so i was wondering about putting that up on foam maybe just to give it a lift but i've decided no i'm just gonna glue it on because i think if you look at a bag they're not normally raised are they they're normally quite flush so we'll just stick it on and you are not worried about which way it goes on just get it down okay i can come along when this is done and take off the glue marks with my glue eraser let's put the zip on let's go around the glue bottle to do that bit there So I'm going to let that dry. Okay. So let's start putting these on. So I think the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this closed. And I want this one, which is the smaller one that's going to be the fastening so i'm going to have that coming over here so one side's going to be glued and the other side is going to have the um hook and loop so i've slightly bent it there so i know which side is which okay So I'm going to put the fuzzy Velcro bit under here. And then I'm going to hold the bag closed. And I want it roughly in the middle. 
but actually I think I'm going to go at the centre of this Christmas tree because that looks kind of centralised to me. So I'm going to hold the bag closed. I'm going to aim for the top of the Christmas tree. Pop that there. And now what I can do is glue the other side because I've got the rest of it in place where I want it to be. Now I could have used red liner tape for this but I just thought, you know, I'm going to use my wet glue just in case. So make sure all your edges do line up at the ends. I'm just going to hold it there for a second and let that glue dry. So for the competition giveaway, let's say, let's leave it open until the end of August. So I'll draw it around the 1st of September. Um, can be open anywhere because I don't think these dies will cost a lot to post. So I could live to regret saying that, but... <laughs> Let's try. I say open anywhere, I'll send to them, you know, anywhere. Um, and what, right, so let's say you have to be a subscriber and I have to be able to check. You have to be okay with me not using one of those random comment generator things because I don't have the ability to do that and film at the moment. So I'll put all names into a box and pull one out like I did on my last giveaway. Um, you will get the um choice between silver embellishmenty bits gold embellishmenty bits or craft um you have to be over 18 because that is part of the youtube t's and c's isn't it um let's see what else I think it would be great if people could like share the giveaway because that would really help me grow the channel which is what I want to do anyway and I have got another giveaway coming up as well just to put a teaser in there um, and so yeah share the giveaway on your channels on your facebook wherever just talk about it or what have you anything you like as long as it gets out there and then in comments below can you please tell me where you've shared it or what have you but also um tell me who you would like to make a gift bag for um, and for also for what occasion so would it be your husband for his birthday would it be your best friend for and then you know Christmas anything just let me know who you would want to make a gift bag for and why in the comments right that's pretty stuck so I'm gonna leave that there uh, let's put these straps on next so I cut three of the long ones and what I'm going to do is run them down the front of the bag in fact I think I need to cut some more because on the other bag I had them front and back So I want to keep these a nice even distance apart as well. I am just going to eyeball it. It's entirely up to you how you do it. You could measure it. You can eyeball it. Whatever you want. The good thing about this tree paper is it just gives you a bit of an idea. Which is quite handy. Okay, so I did actually stop and go and cut another two large straps and I'm just going to stick these on here now in exactly the same position. I tell you, I love this tree paper. It makes everything so much easier. Right, so I have glued those on front and back. 
as you can see. So now I can start adding the other decorations to the bag. So I'm just going to close it up again. Now, had I thought that through, I could have probably butted those up to make sure they were dead equal. But, you know, it doesn't bother me that much. So I'm going to put the round tag on the front of the bag. Uh, I'm probably going to use red liner tape for that if I'm honest. But I think um, foam pads would equally work really well just to give it some dimension. I'm going to pop that just there. And then I'm going to put these as fastenings. So the shorter end is going that side of the bag and the long side is coming this side of the bag. So I will be gluing this side. So actually I'm going to use red liner tape for that. And then I'll be using a dot and dab um, fixer on the other end see that's why it doesn't matter like loads if these don't match up exactly because these detract from that so do you kind of want to make sure that these are the same length so I'm just kind of eyeballing it to try and make sure they at least sort of line up. And then see these little round fixings. You can glue them on, um, but I'm just going to poke them through. I'm not too worried. So comes, yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? Over and under. So the, the little prong thing makes it look like it's stuck into the hole. Ta-da! Right, let's get the Velcro. So you definitely want to slide these little claspy bits on first. Because otherwise you won't get them over the Velcro. Um, let's put this on under here. But see, this is why I don't glue it, because then I can still move it around. It's just fiddling to get it where you want it to, really. And it is personal choice about how you want your bag to look and how you want it to be. You might want it a little bit different to how I've done mine. But, you know, personal choice. And that's the great thing about crafting. It's personal and it's, you can make it personal to the person you're doing it for. That's why I love crafting. It's just such a pleasure to bring joy to other people through something I love doing, if that makes sense. Slide this back down. There we go. And now all I need to do is finish the back and put a handle on. So I'm going to grab the um, zip from earlier need to open this and push the bag into shape really quick it's just kind of come out a little bit so see now I could have put the handles a bit further apart so that would have sat bang between them so I do tend to make sure the bag is closed before I stick anything on and also that it's in the right shape. There we go. And then all I have to do is put the handle on. So I think 
put the handle like that. In fact, I think last time I kind of used this piece here for the handle because it's kind of got a score line to fold. But never mind, it's not the end of the world. There we go. And there is another very beautiful doctor's bag done. I love these. I think they are stunning. And that's going to look great under somebody's Christmas tree. Um, you could add a tag around the handle as well, which I will probably do when I know actually who is it for. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to it. So I hope you have found the video interesting. I hope you will find it easy to follow if you're lucky enough to win the competition. Um, I think this will also show who watches the videos all the way through because obviously I haven't put how to enter at the end. Um, and um, I hope you like this gift bag as much as you liked the last one. So thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.